up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 of the top tips you can use to get better at modeling cabinets in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so the absolute number one most important thing when you're working with cabinets is you have to reduce the amount of rework that you do as much as possible. Because when you're working with cabinets, basically... Because when you're working with cabinets, what's happening is you're just doing the same thing over and over again, right? So if you've got a cabinet like this one and you've already got a base um, or like a cabinet carcass in here, if you're coming in here and manually modeling out the next cabinet, you are wasting so much time. So what you need to do instead of like remodeling parts and pieces over and over again, you need to set up your cabinets in a way where you can just reuse what you already have in here, right? So, and we'll talk about dynamic components in a minute, but even if you're not using dynamic components, if you are coming in here and creating a cabinet and then another cabinet like this, you need to be copying the first cabinet over and then modifying it rather than just remodeling over and over again. And depending on the way that you have this modeled out or set up, you could do this a few different ways. We'll talk about sticky geometry in a second, but say you wanted this cabinet to be different than the other cabinet, we would just make this unique and then we would just adjust the parts and pieces accordingly. And so you could use an extension to do this, you could use sticky geometry to do this, but you need to set up the way that you're modeling so that you're just reusing this geometry. Do not remodel things over and over again. Adjust what you already have to the different sizes. Okay, so tip two is to utilize the sticky geometry in your model to your advantage. So what I mean is if you've ever had geometry like this inside your model where you've got maybe like two boxes over here, and say that you selected the smaller box, right? Remember that geometry is gonna be all stuck together in here because the faces kind of merge together. Now, sometimes that can be a little bit frustrating, but if you set your models up properly, it can be a huge time saver. So say that I've got this object in here, it's not a dynamic component. And by the way, I talk about this more inside of the Cabinet Essentials course, which is currently on sale through, um, through October 29th at 11.59 uh, p.m. with lifetime access. So if you want more information on this, as well as some additional support setting this up, uh, you can definitely check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash cabinets. But um, in this case, say that I've got a cabinet like this one, well, right now, notice how I've got all the parts and pieces in here as groups. Um, you could definitely do that. But one thing that I like to do, and this goes a little bit against what I usually do with grouping, but for my cabinets, because all of these parts and pieces are going to stay in place, right? Relative to the rest of the cabinet. Like I'm probably not going to make this cabinet thicker or thinner, though you could definitely do that. Um, so basically what that means is that means that all of the things that go in this horizontal direction, instead of having them grouped, what I might do is I might explode them. So if I explode them, notice how those are in here as raw geometry. Well, now if I pick up this end piece right here, but I also pick up this geometry on the end of these objects, what's going to happen is when I move this around, that sticky geometry is going to adjust like this. So you can use this in order to really quickly adjust your geometry using just the sticky geometry inside of the model. So this is probably the one area where I go against the like group everything because now that I understand the way that this works, it makes adjusting things really easy. And say that we had something like a door. So we're just going to model a cabinet door right here. I'm not going to worry about an overlay or anything like that. We'll talk about that in a second. But say this was three quarters of an inch thick. And then this was to go to the halfway point right here. The same thing works with the door, right? So you would take all of this and group it. But then if you double click into the group, you can pick this up and you can use that sticky geometry in order to adjust where this is. So say that I did want to create like an eighth of an inch overlay. What I could do is I could move this over an eighth of an inch. I could use this an eighth of an inch. The only thing with doing this with your sticky geometry is you need to make sure when you do it that you're doing it along the model axes. Otherwise, you're going to have real problems in here. But it's something that can save you a massive, massive, massive amount of time once you learn to utilize that sticky geometry. So if you do want to take your cabinet modeling to the next level, my cabinet essentials course is currently on sale with lifetime access through Wednesday, October 29th. So um, this is my complete 
course for teaching you how to model cabinets inside of SketchUp. It gives you a complete workflow from start to finish, as well as having example projects that we go through showing you exactly how to model things and set things up so that not only can you create cabinet boxes and things like that, but you can also actually create useful plans and uh, models that actually look good inside of SketchUp. So if you do want some additional help learning how to use cabinets in SketchUp, you can definitely check out the Cabinet Essentials course at the sketchupessentials.com slash cabinets. Okay, and so we've talked about using this sticky geometry. The more powerful way of doing this to save a ton of time is if you can use dynamic components, you should. So for example, this is a dynamic base that I've created, I and mean, it's something that I can resize. Well, remember with a regular cabinet, right? So if we have this one right here, and I'm gonna move this over, you can't use the scale tool because it deforms your object, right? It stretches your wood, causes a lot of different issues in here. So you can't necessarily do that. But if you have a dynamic component like this one, what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically redraw with the proper thicknesses of your wood like this. So I have both dynamic bases that are basically just the carcass, which is what I usually start with, but I also have other dynamic components in different styles, right? So I've got all these different uh, cabinets, and this is more a visual of what you can do with the dynamic components, but I've got dynamic uh, bases that have like drawers built into them and other things like that. And these are all available as a part of the Cabinet Essentials Lifetime Access Sale that's going on. But say I wanted this shaker style cabinet right here, well, this one I can just drop it in like this, and I can just resize it. And so when I resize it, notice how I can resize the depth if I want to do that, and I can also resize the width. So you can either build your own dynamic components, or if you do want to check out my library of dynamic components um, that are a huge time saver for me, you can do that um, at the sketchupessentials.com slash cabinets. But either way, if you can figure out a way to use dynamic objects in your workflows, it's going to save you so much time. Okay, so tip four is create a library. And you can see how I've got a library in here. Um, it's a little bigger just because I also use it for marketing purposes, but you should be creating your own library of different things, right? So if you look at my library right here, for example, I have a library of corner cabinets that I can adjust. I've got a library of countertop profiles that I can bring in that are the different styles of countertops. I've also got these dynamic shelves that I've created and you can make your library look however you want, but these are basically the tools that I have in order to really quickly model these things. Because again, the enemy when it comes to cabinet modeling is repetition, right? You wanna do as little of the same work over and over again as possible. So anytime you have something that you think you're gonna use again, save it into a model um, that acts as a library file. Then all you have to do is just take an object and do a control C inside of one SketchUp window, and then you can do a control V in your other SketchUp window in order to bring it in. But now, instead of me having to model these upper cabinet carcasses or the base cabinet carcasses over and over again, I can just use something from my library in order to really quickly um, get those objects into my model without having to do a whole bunch of remodeling and rework. Okay, so tip five is when you're modeling your cabinets, remember that the gap between the doors is an architectural element, right? So cabinets look different depending on how big this uh, reveal is or this uh, overlay is um, on the door. So don't come in here when you model something out and just like draw a rectangle across the face and then just kind of extrude it out, right? Like say I was to do that like this, and then let's say, I'll get rid of this dynamic cabinet, but let's say I had this cabinet right here and it was just this kind of like flush, simple style. And I was just to copy it over and over again. Well, notice how that looks very uniform and there's no actual gaps. And this isn't actually how you build your cabinets, right? Also, this is not nearly thick enough. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit thicker just for the visual right here. But like that, that element is something that actually makes a difference in the way that your cabinets look. So you should model it that way. So what you should do is instead of modeling your door so that it goes all the way to the outside right here, make sure that you're actually accounting for that gap. And that actually gets really easy once you um, utilize what we've been talking about a little bit with uh, reusing things like doors, but also using that sticky geometry, right? Because for example, if I was to copy this door, over right here. Notice that gap is already in here, but then we could just take the sticky geometry here. And what we could do is we could move 
this face over, and then we could move it back by, say, a sixteenth of an inch right here. So that's another thing that you should be doing is modeling those reveals in here. Now, a couple other things about that. First off, when you do things like this, the move tool in copy mode isn't always the right choice, right? Because when you look at a cabinet, and this might be a little bit of a bad example, um, but say that you had a cabinet that, or say that you had a door that was on the end here. So I'm just going to use the flip tool to move this over a little bit. So what's going to happen is on the end here, because you want to keep a uniform eighth of an inch or whatever your reveal is like this. So this is going to be an eighth of an inch off of the side right here. But in the middle, you want the overall gap here to be an eighth of an inch between one door and the other, right? So this gap um, from here to the end needs to be a little bit different. Well, if you use the move tool in copy mode, right? So if I use the move tool in copy mode right here, and I pick this up and I move this over like this, your gap is going to be wrong because your gap on the left-hand side here needs to be different than the gap on the right hand side for this to be uniform. So if I move this over like this, notice how this is twice as wide as this right here. Well, you don't have that issue if you use the flip tool in copy mode instead. So if I use the flip tool, what I can do is I can single click on the flip tool. And then remember that you can click and drag the flip tool in order to set the plane across which this is going to flip. Well, you can also tap the control key to go into copy mode. Well, now if I do that, what that's going to do is that's going to flip this across the middle and create a copy. And I maintain that uniformity right here. So for a lot of my, um, for a lot of my cabinets, and things like this that need to be uniform across a central point, I'll use the flip tool in order to create those copies. And so one other thing about that, and I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this door. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna move this geometry out to make sure that we have the proper offset here. So I'm gonna move this back a 16th of an inch like this. So this door and this door, because they're both internal, are going to be the same. Well, what you can do is you can use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this over. But what a lot of people do wrong with the move tool in copy mode is they try to copy off of this point right here. Well, the problem with that is if I move this over, I don't maintain that gap, right? So there's no like inference point right here in order to maintain the proper gap. So if you don't use the flip tool, the other thing you can do is you can use the move tool in copy mode, but set a copy base point off of your object. So instead of me setting a base point right here, when I use the move tool in copy mode, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this point because then I'm copying this object relative to this point. Well, in this case, this door is going to be the same spacing relative to this point over here. So what I would do is I would select this door, tap the M key, tap control in order to go into copy mode. And then we'll just scroll out, move over and scroll back in and click right here. We'll notice how this copy this object relative to this point rather than relative to a point on the door, which allows me to maintain the spacing. So by using a base point that's off of your object, relative to where your object needs to go, um, it's going to help you copy a lot better. Okay, so when it comes to countertops, I like to keep a library of profiles. You can download images of profiles and create your own. You can kind of do whatever you want with this. I have my own library that you can get as a part of the Cabinet Essentials Lifetime Access Sale, which closes later this week. But I have these profiles in here that I can just copy and then I can just drop in because everything I do, my goal is to reduce the amount of rework that I have to do. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this profile in like this. And then I'll just use the follow me tool. So I'll just draw a line to this corner and align to this corner right here. And I'll pick those both up and then I'll use that as a path to extrude along. So that's gonna extrude this all the way around the side here. But I always take my countertops and I put them in their own group. So I can toggle them off. I can add transparency if I want to inside of layout using a color by layer. But then if I want to add that over here, all I have to do is just pick up this profile. And I can just use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy this over like this. And in this case, we could just use the flip tool. So I'll just click and drag over here in order to flip it. But then I can just extrude this across like this. So you can see how my countertops are separate from my cabinets right here. And I can get in there and edit them anytime I want.
And while we're in here talking about adding countertops, let's also talk about how we can cut openings in the countertops. So the way that I do this is I like to pick whatever sink I'm going to use. Um, so we're just going to look for a sink right here. And so you can filter and look for products when you search for sink in order to pick one that's actually going to come from a manufacturer. Then you could do whatever you want, right? You can sort by popularity. Um, you can do whatever you want to. Um, in this case, let's say that I was just to bring in this 21 inch sink right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it in place. So I'm going to find the spot where I want that sink to go. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got this surface aligned with my surface right here. And so sometimes it helps to toggle your hidden geometry on because you can find those edges, but I'm just gonna move this over so that it aligns with the middle of this door. Well, if we wanna cut an opening in this surface, what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click in here and we're just gonna select our whole countertop, right? So if I triple click on that, it's gonna select all the faces in here. But if you right click and do an intersect faces with model, it's gonna go through and it's gonna find the intersection point in here where this face intersects with this model right here. And you can just click in here and you can just delete out those surfaces. One thing that I'll do is I'll go into a top down view as well and I'll pick up all of the edges that are in here and I'm gonna to toggle my tray on. But in this case, I wanna right click. We're gonna do a select edges or we can do a deselect faces because I just want these edges in here. But then you can just hide those using this button right here, and now you can't see those additional edges. So now I have this nice hole in my countertop. And if you ever have to move this, the easiest way is just to delete out your counter and just rerun it along the surface. It takes like five seconds to do. So that's an easy way to cut openings inside of your sink. And then finally, this is a tool that I use a lot um, for materials. It's an extension that you can download for free inside of uh, the extension warehouse called Architectures. So I use Architectures um, probably first, um, not always only, but if you just search for Architectures right here. And this is something that's only going to be available in the uh, pro version of SketchUp because you can't do use extensions on the iPad version or the web version. But if I download this extension and install it, and I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, usually even though they're not marked as compatible, most of the time they work. But what Architectures does is it gives you access to their library of materials, right? So you can pop this up. I think you have to create a username, but they've got this whole library of wood materials that you can bring in. So in this case, say I wanted the oak, for example, I can just import this material and I can just apply it to my different objects in here. So um, it's a really easy way to access like a full complete library of different materials directly inside of SketchUp. And it's got way more options than you would get with, uh, with what's built into SketchUp itself. All right, so that's a few of the tips that can make you a lot faster with cabinets. I talk about this a lot more in depth inside of the Cabinet Essentials course. So if you do wanna check that out, I'll link to it on this page. That lifetime offer is gonna be available through October 29th. But if you have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to leave them down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.